Hi y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. Well, I am on another road trip fishing adventure, this time to the state of North Carolina, and I'm gonna be on Kerr Lake. There are some big catfish in here. The world record blue cat came out of this body of water. I wouldn't mind hooking into it, y'all. So I'm gonna get out here right now, though, and try to catch me some bait. Hard to catch a catfish without any bait, right? So that's step number one. And then once I get something, I don't care if it's bluegill, white perch, whatever. This body of water apparently has a big population of white perch. So I'm hoping to, to stumble into those. Once I get some bait, we're going to get after it. Wind is up a little bit this morning. It's supposed to get worse throughout the mid-morning, early afternoon. So I'm either going to let the wind push me and drift with it, or if it gets too strong, we'll turn into the wind and do some trolling, maybe suspend some baits, drag some baits, just get out here and explore. I'm just over here just winging it, man. Never been here, don't really know what any kind of patterns are going on. I'm just showing up, hoping for the best. Y'all, so come with me. Let's see if we can figure this lake out. So I come across the channel from the boat ramp here, just try to get in this little pocket here out of the wind. And I got the live scope here with me on the kayak and I'll, well, let me turn this transducer around. Maybe you can see something. Up under this dock here, there is all kinds of something. I don't know what those are, but we're about to throw in there and find out. Got one right there. Let's see what this is. Bluegill. All right, I'll take it. That's what we need, y'all. Just anything to bait a hook with just to get us started. Once we get out there and start trolling around, looking for cats, we will hopefully come across some schools of white perch out there too, and I'll just drop down on top of them as we move along. That bluegill, man, he's jumping around. He's excited about being on this video. Here's another one of his friends too that's pretty pumped up and ready to get up here and get to it. What do you think about it, bluegill? I've made this bluegill's dreams come true. He never thought I'd be over here in North Carolina on Kerr Lake, and here I am. Making bluegill dreams come true. It's what I do, folks. I'm like the bluegill make a wish. There we go. Something hit me hard. What this is? I don't think that's a bluegill, y'all. I don't know what this is. If he's a bluegill, by gosh, he's a big one. I'm gonna back off a little bit of that drag here. I just want to get a look at this dang thing. I wonder what it is. Oh, did you see that? Oh my gosh, I had a bass that had that bluegill, man. I had a bluegill. He got eaten by a bass in the bass. I saw him swim off right there. Oh, man, bluegill. Let's, let's get you in the light over here, buddy. Look at that. You can see where he had him right there on that side. <laughs> I was like, that thing, it felt like it got bigger. That side there ain't too messed up, but that right there, man, he had him. Well, bad news, Bluegill. You luckily got away from the bass, but you didn't get away from me. You going in the cooler, buddy. How awesome was that, y'all? Man, I love it when that happens. I do a lot of ultralight fishing. My regular audience knows this. And oftentimes you have bass that'll follow and chase the Bluegill that you're reeling in when I'm using the gulp and stuff. And every once in a while, one of them smacks it or hits it. And that one there, man, he had the dang thing eat and just let it go when I got him up here. I wish that bluegill had gotten wedged in his mouth and I could have somehow got him up here to the kayak and got him in. <laughs> that would have really been awesome. Here's another one. I think this is a, this is old crappie right here. This one of them old, old, old paper mouths right here. Come on in here, crappie. Well, we got everything up under this dock. We got bluegill, bass, and crappie up under here. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to put him down here in my pedal drive slot. There's a little water here. I can keep a fish alive. I honestly don't know if I can use crappie for bait in North Carolina or not. This is one of them things I'm gonna have to research right quick. I wasn't planning on catching any over here, but hell, you never know. 
So apparently it says, inland game fish may be used as bait if they are legally taken and are in agreement with the size and krill limits of the waters being fished and other regulations. So let's see what the, the size limit on crappie is. So apparently crappie are eight inch minimum and 10 inch minimum depending on the body of water. So that one's easily over 10 inches. We're gonna keep him, buddy. That's some, that's some premium bait right there, man. I'm gonna make a few more casts, see if I can get his friends over there too. Here's just another one, by gosh. Let's see what this is. A smart for a smart person would have. Oh, there's a bass. There's a bass. He got him. He got him right there. Did you see that? He's got him, man. He's that bass just come up and eat him right there on camera. I hope he holds on to him. At least comes up and jumps with him. How awesome would that be? <laughs> oh, he's back after him. He's back after him. Come for him again, buddy. Come for him again. That's a three or four pound bass right there. Oh my gosh, he let him go, man. He chased him though. He chased him out, he had him. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Ain't awesome for the bluegill, but you were doomed either way, bluegill. Either you coming with me or you coming with that bass. I was trying to say though, a smart person would have researched the bait laws before he got over here, but I really expected to be using white perch. I thought that's what I'm going to be spending the, the most of my time there. So I get that bluegill in the cooler and probably will. But I just rolled up on this dock. I literally just launched my kayak at this boat ramp and come straight across the channel to try to get out of the wind as I'm getting blown up this way. Let me, boy, the Lord Almighty here, y'all. Let me get situated. I'm that bass has got me all discombobulated. Let me get it spun back around here. Or I can make a better cast at this thing. But uh, again, I, the, the boat ramp's just right across from here and I pulled in this pocket just to get out of the wind because it's kind of up and it's hard ultralight fishing with the wind blowing. And I was scanning these docks with the live scope and I saw a fish just stacked over here on this dock. And uh, you can see, look right there. That's the corner edge there, but man, they are stacked up. And I guess it's a combination of stuff. Obviously, bluegill, crappie, bass, they all right here. So uh, I saw those and I'm like, well, that's easy bait right there, whatever they are. So anyway, let me quit flapping my guns and see if we can hook another bluegill and get a bass to gobble him up. <laughs> man, that's funny. You just never know what's going to happen when you cast that line. Here we go. I just had that thing sitting there and he gobbled it up. Here's another crappie that I am sure is going to keep for us. We'll take him. Yeah, he'll definitely keep. Let's throw him in the cooler too. Thumped me. I felt kabomp. I think that's another crappie right there. Man, this dock is stacked, buddy. It is absolutely stacked right here. Come on up here, fish. This is another one there. Easily going to be keeper size, and he's coming with us. I got something else right there. See if this is a crappie, bluegill. Doesn't matter to me. Crappie. <laughs> Come on in, buddy. None of these crappie have been monster size, but they're keepers, so we keeping. Another something right here. Let's see what this is. I think this in here will probably whatever it is probably going to do it for us oh that's another crappie come on up here crappie we got us plenty of bait now between the crappie and the bluegill we got plenty enough to get started with out here today and again at some point i think we're probably going to run into some white perch and we'll stock up on those when we do all right y'all i am stocked up on bait and headed out to do some cat fishing what a relief it is, man. I tell you, as a cat fisherman, you show up to a new body of water you've never been to before. You got zero bait with you. 
it's a little bit stressful you know it's a little bit of a burden to get out and go find some fish that you can put on a hook to try to catch a catfish with and so to get that part of my session done so quickly it's pretty awesome big relief off my shoulders and, and worst case scenario well best and worst case is we get out here we catch a bunch of catfish we burn through all my bait well i can run back right back over here and catch some more so uh we're in a good situation out here y'all so now all we gotta do is find the cats step one catch the bait step two catch the cats so i'm gonna go out here the wind is blowing this direction so i'm gonna make a run out here and turn around and come into the wind and just kind of follow the contours i'm gonna troll try to keep my speed between 0.3 and 0.5 i'm gonna drag two baits off the back of the kayak and suspend two off the front and we'll just cover some water out here this morning and see what we can run into i don't think we got action here we do buddy i see that rod moving let's get him this is on one of my dragging rigs here got a piece of bluegill this is a chunk i got a bluegill head dragon and a chunk dragon here real shallow right now 10 feet i've actually got my suspended lines raised up out of the water because i come over this little shallow stretch and this one here just took off man first catfish on the Kerr Lake Adventure. He ain't gonna measure up to that world record, but by gosh, it's a start. Boy, he's wound up, ain't he? <laughs> That's a nice fun sizer. Oh, Lordy, calm it down, fish. This fish just can't believe I'm in North Carolina, y'all. He's so excited, thrashing around. Can't contain himself. Well, let's hold him up there, y'all. Fish number one, or catfish number one anyway. I ate him a chunk of bluegill I was dragging along. Real shallow here, 10 foot. I've actually, well, as I reeled him in, I've dropped off here to like 20 feet deep. But uh, yeah, no skunk today, y'all. <laughs> Again, it's, you go somewhere new, that's one of the things you gotta worry about, so got that out of the way but i'll show you here as my phone blows up disregard my phone dinging i know half of you just look down at your phone right now when you heard that thinking it was sure that's what i do if i'm watching a video somebody's phone dings on it i think it's mine but anyway let me take the camera here and show you there's a hump right here and the wind the wind ain't my friend out here today y'all it's kind of going this way and this way and i'm just trying my dangest to to go into it so i don't get all cattywampus and kayaks get blown around real easy so i'm i'm trying to just stay straight into the wind best i can so i come to this side of the channel and i just drug right over this hump here and so i was 10 feet deep when that fish hit now i've come off the other side of it here 26 feet deep now so that fish was up there on top of it and uh i was thinking about just trolling kind of across the channel into this next creek or pocket or whatever it is over here and just making a making a long troll but now i'm kind of thinking now i got that little fun sizer right there i may circle back and pull over that hump one more time here before i keep going across the channel see if i can't get some more but that one there ate a chunk there of the bluegill and my dragon rig here y'all have seen this and other videos but i basically i've got my sinkers here there's a link down in the video description if you want to learn how to make these very cheap easy to make got that on a three-way down to a uh, a leader here float rattle 10 aught size circle hook and i was pulling that along not very far behind me maybe 30 yards at the most there kind of a, a short line out and and uh, we done got us one y'all so skunks out let's see if we can get another one now and keep this momentum going well something's going on right there what is that what is that is that something got my line that was a dang i don't even know what that was but it just ripped me off my line I don't even know what that was. Something had gotten my bait, y'all. Something had gotten my bait and come all the way up to the surface with it. I didn't know till I saw my rod bounce a little bit. I looked back and he was 
thrashing around there. I almost look like a gar. My bait had been pulled all the way up to the surface. I'm 27 feet deep here right now. How odd is that, man? Crazy things happening out here, y'all. So I have covered a good stretch of water now. I don't know if you can see over here behind me, but I started over there on that shoreline and have just come across the channel and kind of working my way back down into this pocket here and just haven't really got anything going on. I got that catfish over there shallow on top of that hump and hooked something out here in the middle of the channel. I initially thought it was a gar. I couldn't get a look at it, it was a longer fish, but the more I thought about it, I was like, you know, I wonder if that wasn't a striper because they have striped bass here in Kerr Lake and back home oftentimes when I catch them accidentally while catfishing, they will hit the bait and come straight up to the surface. And so I'm, I'm wondering if that's why I hooked out there, but either way, I lost it and it's not the target species today. So what I am doing for the target species of catfish, I ain't getting it done. So I think what I'm gonna do is reel up and run farther back in here to this pocket to, to get shallower. Since that one bite I had was 10 feet deep, I'd like to maybe get about 15 feet deep back in here and work my way back shallower from there and see if there's anything going on in the shallows because it for sure ain't happening out here. I mean, I'm not seeing anything here on the graph. It's like the dang Dead Sea here, not getting any taps, no bites, anything. So we got to make a change y'all because this ain't getting it done. Oh buddy, that one's pulling. That one's pulling. Oh man, let's get that one out of the, out of the rod hole. What thing just took off, man. Right now I'm 14 feet deep, y'all. I'm just working my way back here farther in this pocket. I reeled up, come back in here till I hit about 15 feet deep and just started trolling again because well, I just wasn't getting it done out there. I come here to catch fish, by gosh, so we <laughs> have to hunt them down if they ain't where I'm at. We got a something here. It feels pretty good. He nailed it, buddy. That's a nice blue. All right, maybe I've been spending too much time deep this morning. Maybe we need to be fishing a little bit shallower. That first fish tried to tell me when he hit 10 feet deep on that hump, he tried to tell me what was up and I didn't pay attention. We got us another fun sizer here. All right, fish, come on in here now. All right, that's another one on a bluegill chunk right there. Bluegill chunk getting it done. The head baits, not so much. Grab our fish here and hold him up. Another fun sizer right there, man. He nailed that rod. I tell you, when you don't have a lot of line out and you're in this shallow water, but they nail it and go. <laughs> That's one here. It's a welcome sight, man. Where you been, fish? You been just swimming in shallow water waiting on me? You got any friends there? He ain't gonna tell me. Don't worry, fish. I'll find them my damn self. Get out of here. How you going? All right, well, let's stick us another piece of bluegill on there. That bluegill's getting it done, so I'm going to stick with it. Not my favorite bait, but over here, who knows? It may work better than what it does back home. It's certainly getting them today. This right here was the bluegill that our bass tore up right there, so we're going to his luck's run out. We're going to see if we can have some luck with him catching the catfish. I'm just going to cut the tail off and cut the head off. And that small chunk like that is what got that last blue cat there that was a nice fish. If I can get this thing thing cut, we'll stick it on there and send it out. Again, I'm not, I'm not running these dragon rigs too terribly far behind me. Don't really, don't really need to. I mean, the wind is up today, but it's not very choppy back here. You don't have a lot of surface area to hit kind of back here in his pocket to make it bounce something down. So I don't really see a need to run it super far behind me. Let me trim this fin here a little bit too. Give that a little haircut. But this sinker drags along the bottom and the float kind of keeps your bait up there just off the bottom so it ain't snagging on everything. And we'll just keep moving along here about a half a mile an hour. 
I'm going to work my way on back. I'm just going to keep going and get super shallow. We'll let that let out a little bit more line and flip the bale over and uh, just keep making our way along here. I've fished a little bit later into the... My, my hope of coming out here today was I'd get bait quickly, get on some catfish early, and then take like the midday here, hottest part of the day, take it off, go get some lunch, then go get me come back later on uh this afternoon and hit another spot you know but best of intentions you know the catfish the bait did their part the catfish ain't done theirs so i've stayed out here a little longer i just when i'm home if i go out and i fish a morning session and i don't do any good let me flip that over there if i don't do any good well i just go to the house i'm like hey, i'll try it again you know next day whatever but when i'm traveling somewhere when i'm on the road and I ain't getting the results I want. I just feel compelled to just grind it out and stick with it until I figure out the, the fish that I'm trying to get. So that's what I'm doing out here today. I'm pushing past my lunch break, y'all, to get after these fish. I think we may have another one here. I was getting ready to... Yeah, we do. He's on. I was getting ready to reel up here. I'm about to go through this bridge. I just keep making my way back here in this pocket, y'all. I'm pretty much committed at this point to seeing it through i'm gonna go back here just as shallow as i can get i've definitely got more bites here the shallower the water i've gotten and this has been the first small fish that i've gotten here you know the others have been fun size here this one here's this one's got a bad attitude that's a that's a dang old channel cat right there ain't it it is well, we don't ever want to see it. We start catching these. I am getting out of here. But I'm pretty well committed at this point to just seeing this idea through. The deeper water that I was at, kind of out in the, in the, in the channel there, wasn't panning out. We've come back here. We've got some bites. Unfortunately, from that right there, you know I hate them things. I ain't never met a channel cat I ever liked. But... Uh, yeah, y'all, I'm here at this I'm here at this bridge now, so I'm on I'm gonna get through it. And again, it opens up back here, at least on the map anyway, and is and is uh, just continuing on, working shallower and shallower back through there. So we'll see. There's either gonna be something back there or they ain't. So I've worked my way back in this pocket beyond the bridge here, and on the map card, it's showing that the depth's around 10 feet deep here, but in reality only like six feet here where i'm at so i think i've come back in here about as far as i'm going to go so what i'm going to do is i'm going to reel up again go back out to about the 10 foot depth and then start trolling my way back out because that seems to be that 10 to 15 foot depth has been where the fish have come from the limited bites we've had that's where they've come from so that's what i'm going to focus on for the rest of my time here today got a fish right here fish right here man oh he's gonna pull now He's gonna pull. <laughs> so I come out, y'all, on this side of the bridge, and the wind is blowing this way, and it's it's moving me at like 0 0.6, 0 0.7 consistently. And when it gusts, I'm a mile an hour or more, but I can't control it. My speed going this way without a drift sock, which I didn't bring with me on this trip, because this this kind of fishing right here usually ain't my style you know so i'm just letting the wind take me whatever speed it moves me at that's what we're going but by gosh we got another one here this one's on a head bait another one dragging yeah another another fun sizer right there oh whoa, don't do that fish oh boy he's he's throwing the head bait off doing all that Every fish we've got so far has been dragging. The suspended baits, they ain't been they ain't been touched, they ain't been pecked, nothing. I mean just nothing. And I don't know if it's because fish just aren't wanting a suspended bait today. You know, I have been fishing kind of shallow, especially back here. Um or it could just be oh quit fish. Lord, I'm soaking wet now. But my suspended base, I've had the crappie on them and been using the bluegill here dragging. 
I put the crappie on my suspended baits early because I thought that would be my better quality bait. I'd get more more action on it. But been, it's been the exact opposite. Come on in, fish. Boy, this is an ornery devil. Ornery devil right here. Got me sopping wet, man. Get that off of me there. Hold yourself up there, fish. You proud of yourself. Y'all, I'm soaking wet on my side here. I can feel water dripping down my drawers right now. You got water soaked down to my, down to my hind end, fish. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm moving along kind of quick. Didn't bother him a bit. He nailed it. So. That's what I'm going to do. Just let this wind just push me basically back up here to the boat ramp. And then I think I'm probably just going to go back over to that dock, see if those crappie and bluegill and all that that was stacked up this morning, I'm going to see if they're still there. And I'm going to get stocked up on bait that way tomorrow. I can hit the ground running. I'm going to be fishing up here uh, tomorrow too. I'm going to be up here uh, for a few days getting ready for a tournament. So tomorrow I'll be able to get out hopefully around first light and be able to be catfishing right from the start and like today where that was delayed there getting bait but anyway that's gonna be my plan so i got my dragon rods now with the wind pushing me this way i have my dragon rod this one and that one on the back there on that side dragon and the right side of the kayak now i've got the suspended baits which again they ain't done diddly poo poo for us all day long is it the crappie is it the fact that fish don't want to suspend but i don't know but I know this is working, so I'm gonna keep doing it. Oh, here we go, man. Nice takedown. Nice takedown. Oh, he's taking some drag, buddy. He's taking, oh my gosh, and he let it go. Oh my gosh, that was a nice takedown. Reel in, see if he got my bait. What a bummer that was. I think he got my bait. Man. He did. Ripped me off, man. That fish right there ripped me off, but that was a good one. That was a nice takedown. Oh, let me get the camera back on. I'd reset it after that fish. Now I'll be doggone. I ain't got one right here. Let's we'll see if we can keep this one buttoned up. Wouldn't it be something if that was the same fish? I lost him on one rod and my other bait goes by him and he gets it. <laughs> that other one i mean it felt like a good fish for the short time i had him on he was pulling some drag this one was taking a little drag too before i could get to get the camera going again i just i went i hit my button on my camera to reset and that's when this one hit <laughs> yeah folks this kind of this kind of fish in here shallow water just kind of free drifting with the wind not my style i'm more of a deep water follow the contours kind of guy but out here today with the area i'm at on the lake the fish seem to be shallow and i'm just trying to adapt and grind and since i started doing that by gosh it's paid off i've got several more fish here than what i was getting out there in the deeper water which was zero so glad i switched things up i think this is going to be a decent fish right here he feels good i wonder if this wasn't the same one. Oh man he's going under the kite now he still ain't come up hope he don't get up there by my motor oh crap i'm gonna turn my motor off because he's got my front my front line up there my suspended line of course that fish did <laughs> of course he did come on up fish let's just get a look at you i see the bubbles hell i'm only 14 feet deep here it can't be it can't be that far away from me i just want to get a look at him see what we're dealing with here yeah nice nice fish nice fish right there that's the biggest one of the of the trip so far nice man now he's got my he's got my other front line he's got the stinger 
in the back from my suspended bait up here that he got in. Come on up here, fish. This is a tank right here, man. That's a good one. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, man. This one right here is fist pump worthy, y'all. This is more of what I come to Kerr Lake for right here. Let me hold him up there. Nice, man. Nice. That's a whopper right there, man. Whoo. Ain't it funny the timing of, oh man, he's mad. You calm it down now, fish. You gonna act like somebody here on video now. We ain't doing that. But the timing of it, we lost that other fish. And a few seconds go by and boom, this rod goes down. I wonder, you know, maybe I, I, I was fighting that fish briefly. He come off and he just happened to be swimming toward my other bait and there's another easy meal and he takes, who knows, or this fish just could maybe had a friend and I just come through him and, nice man. <laughs> this makes me happy y'all. This makes the grind worthwhile. <laughs> All right, buddy, let's let you go, man. I got your friends to catch down there. All right, fish, let's say goodbye. There you go. Oh man, that's awesome, y'all. That one there, fist pump worthy for sure, man. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna reel up these suspended lines because they ain't, again, they ain't nothing touching them things, man. And them fish there, I had to have come right over the top of them. I had to have, you know, because I mean, my lines were over here beside me, so they had access to them suspended baits. They don't give a crap about them. I'm gonna reel them up, get them out of the way. I'm gonna make another run down here because I don't have any dragging baits in right now. We'll rebate and we'll pull through that area again where, where we had those two bites and see if there's any more or not. And then if they are great, if not, well, we'll just keep making our way on out of this pocket. But you know, the wind had me moving right there when those fish hit. I mean, it's, I'm spotlocked right now as I film this little segment, but I mean, I was moving along. I'm not under like 0.6 miles an hour at any point. And when it gusts, I'm a mile, a little over a mile an hour. So the fish that are here, they seem to be aggressive. So um, glad I decided to grind it out in this area, man. All right, guys. Well, it is well past my lunchtime and this old boy right here is hungry. So I'm going to go restock on some bluegill. Heck with the crappie, man. I was so excited this morning. I got them crappie and found out there that they legal to use in North Carolina just as long as you keep them whole. You know, I thought I'll cut some slits in them things, fillet aside. We'll have a big premium bait down there. And yet it's the dang bluegill. I hate using bluegill at home. It doesn't do anything for me at home. Just dinks, you know. But man, it's got it done out here today and small bluegill at that. So I'm going to go get me some more of them before I head out and then I'm going to go get me a bite to eat and plan on hitting it again tomorrow. I'm going to go somewhere different on the lake tomorrow. I'm going to, even though I've been on a shallow water bite today, I just can't help myself. <laughs> I'm going to go hit an area that's a lot deeper tomorrow and at least try it out. And if I'm getting bit there, well, awesome. If not, well, then I'll get back on this shallow water bite uh, somewhere up there. But anyway, it's been fun, man. It started out super slow until I listened to the fish and did what they wanted me to do. And then we've got on some fish and got rewarded with a big one too. And I've said it so many times, any day I go home, well, in this case, go back to the hotel where having caught a big fish, it's a good day, y'all. So I'm having a good time up here in Kerr Lake so far. Hope to keep it going the rest of the week. See you in the next video.